Good morning again. If you were celebrating the traditional giving of thanks in November with the traditional large bird, would you wonder why your guests straightways fall asleep on you? Several of you know it's because there's a particular amino acid in turkey meat called tryptophan, and tryptophan is in the pathway in your body that leads to the production of melatonin, which puts you to sleep. If you were a medieval woman, your coming of age would be the one banquet you threw in your lifetime. Banquets could last 45 days continuously and have over 500 separate courses of food. And the worst thing that could happen to you as a medieval woman that would ruin your reputation instantly is if your guests developed indigestion as a result of your cooking. I mean, think about it. So before you even purchased your menu, you would come to the apothecary shop and show me what you had to see if there was anything in there that needed medication. And if I saw that there were a lot of bird dishes, particularly pheasant, peacock, sparrow, wren, even hummingbird was regularly eaten at banquet. Uh, an example, uh, Henry VIII, all six foot seven and a half, 380 pounds of him, his favorite food, was called garbage pie. He would have a pie crust made and stuffed with hummingbird carcasses, which he would dine on all night. At any rate, if I saw any bird dishes, I would say to you, Madam, I understand that your guests, should they eat so much fowl, will eventually fall asleep, and I guarantee you wake up the next morning with indigestion, I have seen the rest of your menu. And she would say, well, Master, is there any medication you can give me to stave off this issue? And I would say, yes. You need to give your guests parsley and sage, rosemary, and yes, time! You have read the apothecary book by Master Simon and Master Garfunkel. You are well versed indeed, sir. And you would say to me, Good sir, I know of the wondrous medications that you have performed. But I know that they are god-awful to the taste, and my guests would deign to eat them. How should I get these into my guests? So that they be medicated, and my reputation intact. And I would say, Madam, take four-day-old bread, the kind destined for the least important of your guests. Uh, your importance at banquet was determined by the freshness of the bread you were served. No one ate freshly baked bread. They thought that the vapors were poisonous. So the best you could get was half-day-old bread. If you got half-day-old bread, you were number one at that banquet. Now you know who you are if you got four-day-old bread. <laughs> but you take the four-day-old bread down to your cook, and as these birds do cook in the oven, do sprinkle it lightly with the juices coming from the birds until it becomes soft. Place there in equal portions of parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, kneading it with your hands till it become the consistency of a paste, and stuff it into the empty cavity of the bird as it does cook, so will the medicines infuse into the meat and your guests be medicated. And some, thinking it to be a pudding, will partake of it directly and thus be twice medicated. Now, have I just divulged your recipe for stuffing? And you will tell me, yes, I have, because that's the true recipe for stuffing. It's been traditional for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. But let me tell you why it's your stuffing recipe. Parsley's only job is to be a diuretic, which stimulates the kidneys to produce more urine, filters the blood faster, and staves off indigestion. Sage is an anti-spasmodic that stops the churning action of a full stomach, which causes bloating and indigestion. Rosemary is a vasodilator which expands the blood vessels in the stomach and causes digestion to occur thrice faster, staving off indigestion. And thyme is called a carminative. It stops the production of gas in your lower intestinal tract, causing bloating and indigestion. This is all the reason why they're used.
Now, I will tell you right now that stuffing is a learned experience in your household. Children don't like stuffing. It's an acquired taste. When you first give it to them, they say, Oh, it tastes just like medicine. Because it is. Now, I think you're familiar with the song that goes with this. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And, and why are those two associated? Well, let me share with you. The fair that I'm attending now, and that most all of you go to, is called a vending fair. People come to buy and sell items. Scarborough Fair was a hiring fair. It had occurred only once a year. It occurred in a place in England that required people to travel sometimes five or six days to get to. And instead of there being vendors in these booths, there were employers in these booths. And peasants would come and line up to be hired for employment for the next year. But the life of a peasant was not a happy one. And they usually came to fair with bad teeth, horrible smelling breath, terrible indigestion which caused them to walk stooped over. Their skin was pallid, their eyes were often yellow. So the first place they came to the fair was the apothecary shop to get medicine to treat them so that at least temporarily they looked healthy enough to go stand in front of an employer's booth and gain employment. And of course, the four most popular treatments for all of those ailments just particularly happen to be parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Now, that's the G-rated version. There is in truth an R-rated version also, which is because Scarborough Fair brought in such a tremendously large number of people every day, it also brought in a tremendously large amount of prostitutes. And they found that the premier way to have a spermicide on hand was to use a tea or a douche made of parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. It's why the other part of that song says, Remember me to one who lives there. She once was a true love of mine. Such is the R-rated version. Thank you for your patience and your interest.